Josep Broz, also known as Tito or Marshal Tito, a person that everybody wanted dead but none of them were successful and the most famous one was this guy and he could kill anyone that was in his way except Marshal Tito. On the 7th of May 1892, near the city of Zagreb in Croatia, a little boy is born and they named it Josef. At this time, Croatia is under the Austria-Hungarian Empire. Josef's mother was from Croatia and his father was from Slovenia and both of his parents were extremely poor, so he grew up very poor as well. Josep Broz helps his parents until the age of 18 and then later on to help out his family more and make a little bit more money, he decides to go to Austria and get a job at a steel mill. He works as a blacksmith for three years and helps his parents out with some money. And whenever we get to the year 1913, he's called to join the army the army of Austria-Hungary. Josep was such a disciplined young man that whatever workforce he entered, he would make his way up to the top. And in one year, he becomes sergeant major. But Josep is in the Austria-Hungarian army in the worst time possible because this empire is about to begin World War I in one year. When World War I begins, Josep is assigned to go to the Eastern Bloc and fight the Russians. When he sees the soldiers fighting for Austria-Hungary on the Eastern Front, he gets extremely upset because most of the soldiers were Slavs and you couldn't find any Austrians or Hungarians. Either way, he begins working, but unfortunately, in a very short period of time, he's arrested by the Russians and he's taken prisoner. He was thrown in prison because of the rank he held in the Austrian-Hungarian army. When he's staying in the Russian prison for two years, he gets familiar with a new idea, an idea called Bolshevism, which is basically the same thing as socialism, Marxism, and communism. And the Russian Revolution was led by the Bolsheviks. Because of his rank, the Russians realized what kind of a man Yosef was. And that is why they hired him to fight for the Bolsheviks of Russia. He accepts and they send him to Kyrgyzstan. And his mission was to fight the White Army. The White Army was basically anti-Bolshevism and they would fight for the Russian Empire. So they would fight with the Red Army or the Communists. By the year 1920, the Bolsheviks have taken control of the entire country of Russia and they let Josip go back to his country. When Josip returns to Croatia, everything has changed. There is no Austria-Hungarian Empire anymore. The Ottoman Empire has collapsed and the German Empire has shrunk in size. At this time, the Balkan countries are working together and they want to create a federation and create a new country called Yugoslavia. And we've made a video on how Yugoslavia was formed. This video is mainly about Marshal Tito. When Josip returns to his hometown, since he loved the idea of socialism, he enters the new formed Yugoslavian Communist Party. But the communist government is very anti-communist and the name of the country was Kingdom of Yugoslavia. They even make Marxism illegal in this country. And when Marshal Tito realizes that he can't do anything about it, he returns to his blacksmith's job. Three years, meaning in 1923, Josep realizes that there are a lot of underground communist groups starting to form. And once again, he leaves his job to join the new communist party of Yugoslavia. And because of his discipline, any group he would enter, he would rise to the tippity top. And in 1927, he becomes the leader of the Zagreb Communist Party. One year later, the officers of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia go to his house and arrest him. They find explosive in Tito's house and they label him as a terrorist and take him to prison for five years. 
At this time he was very well known in his city of Zagreb and that is why a lot of people would huddle around the prison and ask the authority why they locked him up, he was a good person. This was like a tiny revolution in Zagreb. Eventually in 1934, Marshal Tito is released from prison. After being released, his job just begins. In 1936, Tito goes to Moscow and that's in a way where he has no connection to the Moscow government. The Soviet realized that Tito is a communist man and that is why they kind of listened to him and paid attention. The first time Marshal Tito meets Stalin, he basically hates him and he tries not to meet again because he had realized that Stalin kills everybody that's around him and nobody is safe. He would even kill or imprison their entire families. It seems like he wants to be left all alone in the world. When we get to 1939, with the help of Russian propaganda, communism has taken over the government in Yugoslavia and everybody is a fan now. Marshal Tito is the face of this new revolution. But you have to know that in this era when communism is number one in Yugoslavia, it's still under a kingdom and that is why Tito plans a coup where he takes 24,000 men with him to arrest the king of Yugoslavia. Until the communists plan this coup, the Nazis enter Yugoslavia and start taking over. This is 1941 when World War II has begun. At this point Tito has his own army and that is why he starts resisting the Nazis. The army that was fighting under Marshal Tito's authority was very impressive and that is why Adolf Hitler hears about it. After he hears about this, Hitler decides to kill Marshal Tito and who is appointed to take on that mission? A man named Otto Skorzeny, which we've made a video on before, the most dangerous man in the world. But it seems like Skorzeny didn't realize who Tito was and what he's capable of. An extremely intelligent man that's aware of every direction and that is why Skorzeny couldn't even get close to him. We get to 1944 when there's only one year left of the war. The Germans have left Yugoslavia and the Russians have taken over. At this time, everybody in Yugoslavia loves Marshal Tito and they see him as a hero. And that is why he very quickly takes control of the entire government and the Soviets support him. When Tito begins, he kind of went full Stalin and killed whoever he was against. He would even arrest the pastors that had power in churches. All this news slowly makes his way to Moscow and Stalin hears about it. It seems like Stalin was very jealous of what Marshal Tito was doing and bringing his people together. He basically tells his men to watch Tito closely. Tito hated Stalin from the very beginning because he got to know him early on. But because of communism, he was willing to work with him. But when he heard that Stalin has turned his back on him and he's investigating him, he decided to cut contact and didn't want anything to do with the USSR anymore. Yugoslavia continued as a communist country, but they would work more with the West rather than the East. They wouldn't take sides with NATO or the Warsaw Pact. The Warsaw Pact is basically the NATO version of the Eastern Bloc, which resisted NATO. Yugoslavia was a communist dictatorship, but the doors were open and people could travel here. Like look at Tito next to Queen Elizabeth, next to Fidel Castro, next to Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, Shah of Iran. He tried to make friends with everybody, except Stalin in USSR. Stalin would continuously send his men to kill Marshal Tito and Yosef was getting tired of it. When Marshal Tito saw Stalin in an international meeting once, he told him, stop sending your men to kill me. You've already sent five of them and we caught every single one. If I want to kill you, I'll do it one time and it has to be done only once. Tito has a nickname as well. The only man Stalin couldn't kill. Of course, between the men that Stalin wanted to. 
Even though Yugoslavia was a communist country, it was considered more liberal. Like for example, farmers had power over their crops and didn't have to turn them all in to the capital. Yugoslavia was probably the easiest country to work with for a tourist. If you look at communist cities on the Eastern Bloc, you see very similar town. And these buildings are considered communist buildings where they have no soul and they don't look beautiful whatsoever. It's just single file, same building, same color. But when you look at the cities of Yugoslavia, they still have that old school European look to them. And they didn't leave the culture for communism. If you've seen our video about the biggest statue in the world, you got to know Vallabhai Patel, the man that kept India united and prevented it from being cut up into different countries. You could consider Marshal Tito the Vallabhai Patel of Yugoslavia. Whenever the Slovenians, the Serbs, the Croats had problems with one another, Marshal Tito would treat them in a way where everybody would make friends and get along with each other. May 4th, 1980 is one of the worst days in Yugoslavia, the day Marshal Tito died. A man that single-handedly kept Yugoslavia in one piece and didn't let it collapse. He was the leader of Yugoslavia until 88 years old and all he was trying to do was keep the people together instead of fighting with one another. But after Tito dies, some people came into work that didn't have the same vision as him. And in a very short period of time, they did something that we've never seen before. And every single ethnic group in Yugoslavia hated each other and started a civil war, which caused its destruction. 